who requested video. I've received a request by a cool fan actually. I, I by accident by accident I actually I deleted the comments so I forgot his uh, his username. So yes, I received a cool request by for making the a car uh, or to replicate a car for the F-150 uh, Raptor. As we all know, the Raptor pickup truck is an awesome pickup truck. It's it's sporty. It's, it it can go off road. It's powerful and it's quick. And of course, yes, it's heavy. So uh, I've I've tried to make uh, a similar uh, pickup truck to it, and I hope that I'm really close to it. But I I, I can I'm, I can say that I'm really proud with the end result of this truck. So let's start with the chassis. It's an aluminium panels with ladder chassis, and I did not choose a monocoque because ladder uh, tend actually to work much much better better with the, the suspension problem with the new update. So I had to use ladder. I know that it's heavier and it's not really practical, but it it, it served the nation, it served all the nations very very well, and it, it's good for uh, for all pickup trucks because it, it it can put heavy stuff in the rear and don't worry about the chassis being you know bented like a sandwich. So it's so it's it's a it's a good choice for pickup trucks. Uh, advanced high strength steel. So yes, as you can see, it's light uh, lightweight panels with heavy duty extremely durable uh, chassis which is advanced high strength steel ladder designed uh, of course the engine should be long ditchual front long ditchual with double wishbones in front and solid leaves in the rear and if you are wondering uh, why i've chosen leaves because all we all know that leaves are the most common choice for any pickup truck that wants to hold stuff in the rear and yes, you can make it. You can make it a comfortable pickup truck, even with leaf springs or leaf uh, leaf axle. Zero quality, no need to use higher quality. Or I'll just push it to one. That's better. As you can see, I've chosen not the single door. I've chosen the two door and a half. You know, because that's what the Raptor design is. Zero quality. Oh, let me put one and one here. Why not? I've chosen the white color as you can see because it's a basic color and yes look at these exhaust twin twin rear sided exhaust that's awesome uh, the fixtures are simple actually look at these twin headlights with twin grills and fog lights and these uh, and this logo here these side mirrors with indicators on the side as you can see the door handle for the front doors are like this and the Half doors can open like suicide doors with these handles. The uh, the pupiller cap is here. As I said, the twin side exhaust. That's awesome. These are these are the, the regular practical tail lights with the, the license plate holder and the logo. So it's a it's a pretty common, convenient, practical car. Not, nothing is weird or nothing is special. The engine is. I've sh I've tried to copy the 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 Gen 2 three and a half liter EcoBoost V6 engine. I did not find the correct specs for it, so I had I had to improvise. I had to you know it, I had to do stuff from my from my head. For example, it's a 60, 60 degrees six cylinder engine with aluminium block. We all we all know that EcoBoost is an aluminium block, of course. But the correct bore and stroke for the three and a half liter, I I did not find them anywhere. If you already know them, or if if you do fi fi find them or found them anywhere, uh, could you please help me and write it down in the comment section? That will be really helpful. So I've said, let's. I'm gonna make this engine more stroke of a bore. As you can see, it's 93.8 millimeter for the stroke and 89. On the millimeter on the bore which equals three and a half liter engine which is correct dual overhead camshaft now this is this is correct by Ford themselves four valves per cylinder that's that is also correct aluminium heads also correct variable valve lift yes the engine has variable valve lift I've checked with Wikipedia cast iron uh, crank no need to use a better one I, I've chosen heavy duty forged and forged pistons because the normal cast connecting rods and pistons they, they couldn't handle the 440 pound feet of torque that's why I have chosen forged and of course forged will give you better uh, better fuel octane the engine will, will will need less octane to work that's that's better this is an advantage instead of using cast zero quality no need for higher ones 9.0 to 1 I'm not sure about this I think I'm not sure, but I, but because the the 2.7 liter EcoBoost V6 
used a 9.5 to 1 compression ratio so I figured so I can achieve the correct horsepower and torque I'm gonna use 9.0 to 1 the cam profile is at 38 the variable valve lift is at, is at 68 the I'm, I'm using variable valve timing on all cams yes I had to use plus 10 quality here so I can achieve the correct power and torque figures the, uh, I'm using twin turbocharged with four ball bearing internal uh, the, the intercooler can support 586 horsepower with custom inter custom turbo as you can see first I've tried the fuel economy uh, preset but it didn't really work well so I had to play with it and make a custom turbo so I can achieve again the power and torque figures using using so I can because I always hate when the turbos get laggy I hate turbo lag so I've tried here to, to achieve the the correct power and torque figures without ki without killing the, the power curve so much. So as you can see, the power it starts like 202 pound feet of torque at idle, and the, the turbos will kick in like at 2,500 RPM, and yes, you will achieve the a, a good amount of torque at 421 s 421 pound feet at 3,123 RPM and all the way up to 6,500 RPM with 450 horsepower. As you can see I'm running on 15 PSI with maximum air ratio and 40, 40 and a half on the compressor, 35 and a half on the turbine with plus 5 quality. Nothing special, uh, direct fuel injection with single throttle body, performance intake, because I know this is a, this is the Ford F-150 Raptor uh, that, that I'm trying to make something similar to it, so it had to be performance, not standard. Premium 95 octane is needed, of course. You have 450 horsepower V6 engine, you need 95 octane. And uh, 13 and a half on the air fuel ratio with 96 on the ignition timing. Yes, the ignition is very very advanced. 6,500 RPM limit with plus eight quality here. Dual exhaust, as you saw on the truck, dual sideway exhaust with the high flow three way catalytic converters with straight straight through twin mufflers with bypass valves. Yes, because the Raptor is is loud. The Raptor is not really quiet, so it's good to hear the exhaust as well. Plus six quality here, and uh, this is the final result: 450 horsepower and 439.9, or, or you can say 440 on the pound feet. On the torque, the engine is very reliable and it's it's econo it's economical. It's not bad. It's not really bad. Running on 95 octane, the service cost is acceptable. But I know the engineering time and the production unit is these are a little bit on the high side. I had to do this. I'm not sure how Ford managed to do the 450 horsepower. If, if, if uh, are they actually using High, high quality components or normal components I'm not sure but I had to use high quality components here to achieve the power and torque figures the engine is clean the emissions are low the engine is responsive it's it even says smooth the engine is quiet with of course but but we have bypass valves so the engine will scream at high rpm moving on to the truck I mean I know that the Raptor is rear wheel drive but I really want to see all-wheel drive Raptor. I mean, it will be awesome. It will be quick. With rear-wheel drive, this truck. Let's see what happened here. 7.3 seconds. Why? Let me see what's what's the problem. 7.3 seconds, really. Oh yes. Now 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 it's good. As you saw, the error was. The game did not register, register very well, or then the game did not register very well the power distribution. So I had to remind the game that we are using four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. As you can see now, I'm playing with the let me see which 5.2 seconds. Okay, yes, I want the car, I want the truck to be quick too. So as you can see, it's an all-wheel drive, advanced automatic 9-speed. I know that the Raptor, the new Raptor, will have 10-speed, but unfortunately in automation there is no 10-speed option here. 9-speed is the maximum one, and I'm using like 240 kilometers per hour. This is the transmission top speed. I can I can electronically limit it if I want to 230 to 40, whatever I want. So I'm gonna limit it to 240 exactly and leave this 0.25. 
four. Yes. And as you can see, the spacing is at 27 with manual locker differential. Of course, I need my manual locking because I want to go off-road uh, with 42% to the power to the front and 58% to the rear, zero quality, radial, chunky off-roads, 245s in the front, 235s in the rear. Let me see if I can... No, no, 235s in the rear. And what else we can see here? 760 on the tire diameter with 19-inch rims. 5 offset on the front rims with steel rims. We had to use steel here so we can go off-road. Zero quality. Ventilated 3 pistons discs in front with 375mm. And solid 2 pistons. Actually the brakes are crappy. Let me just... Let me tune them. Let me see. Yes, because I want to, to set the brake at max load with 0%. This is when you know that your brakes are perfectly tuned. Alright, so now let's say again, yes, solid discs, two pistons, 300mm in the rear with 61 hat types. These are sporty hat types. With 68, yes, 67% to the front and 33% to the rear. Zero quality on the brakes, no need for better ones. Fully clad under tray. Well, actually, let me use, let me see. I mean, if I want, I can use off-road skid tray, but I'm, I'm gonna lose fuel economy. Meh. So this is an off-road car. Let me see. What are the differences between? So the off-road one is less comfy. It's more prestigious, less safe, and less utility. How is that possible? Less economical, lightweight. Okay, so I'm gonna use off-road. Off-road skid tray, Let, let's stick with off-road stuff here. Cooling flaps to get the better fuel mileage. 55 on the, co on the engine cooling, 100 on the brake cooling. As you can see, it's a 5-seater car with pre premium interior and premium infotainment system with zero quality. Vi uh, variable hydraulic power steering. Should I use ele electronic or hydraulic? Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna use electro ele electric variable steering, so they love it more and seems more convenient, and it's lightweight. Electronic stability control, no need for launch control, of course. Uh, standard 10 safety, no need to use advanced because it's extremely heavy. Whoa, look at the difference in weight and, and MPG. Sorry guys, you have to use standard 10s. Progressive springs, progressive right? Yes, progressive springs with gas twin, mo, gas mono tube dampers. Yes, I had to use gas mono because semi-active and adaptive and even twin tubes I will ruin the suspension for this off-roader. So I had to use gas mono tubes with off-road sway bars. This is a custom setup suspension and yes, good news guys, if you are wondering about the car load error here in the ride height, if you are one, if you if you are building an off-road or a pickup truck or an SUV, you can forget about the problem. It will be smooth sailing in the suspension section. But if you are building, if you are building a sport car or a racing car, just forget. And it will have a million warning light here about the suspension. So I had, as you can see, these these options are actually great. As you can see, with the two two percent and thirty kilograms of cargo. We have two seven hundred and twenty-two. I'm not sure if these are kilograms. These are kilograms, I guess kilograms. So we have seven hundred and twenty-two kilograms of empty rear load capacity. With four passengers and sixty kilograms of cargo, we have five hundred and eighty-six kilograms of empty space or of of, lo of free load capacity. And this this option here means you have five person inside the cars, full, fully on passengers inside, with fully loaded bed in the rear. And this will leave you with zero load capacity. So yes, these will not do anything for you, but if you, if you are wondering what kind of uh, load capacity left after after persons getting in the car, you will see it here. So I, I've chosen this one so I can see how much uh, front or max load capacity I have left, how much of, of a roll angle the car will get, as you can see. So yes, these are like practical and impractical options as well. 
uh, let's see zero quality here and this is the final result but this truck is very drivable it's not really sporty it's somehow comfortable it's prestigious and it's safe it's practical it has good utility points it can go off-road very well what else it's reliable service cost is acceptable per year 22.4 mpg i think this is low this is not really great but but, but here here with me or bear with me for a two-ton pickup truck this is great i mean if i was using a v8 in front yes a normal 6.2 v8 or 5.7 or 5.8 or whatever v8 this mpg will this mpg will draw will drop like to 15 or, or 17 um, but with this twin turbo v6 with this ecoboost v6 now we have 22.4 the top speed is 240 km per hour, which is, I think it's, an, it's, it's a good, it's very very good for a heavy 2 ton pickup truck. You can go to 140, that's, that's great. And uh, from 0 to 100 in 5.2 seconds, that's, that is also quick for, a, for an all wheel drive. Remember, this is an all wheel drive pickup truck, this is not a rear wheel drive. With, with the rear wheel drive, it will go like in 6.2 seconds, I think. But with all wheel drive, this story is very different. You can go a quarter mile in 13. This is a 13 seconds pickup truck. That's amazing. Um, it can stop well. There is no brake fading. Yes, the roll, uh, the roll angle is, is a little bit, you know, is a little bit high. But it's okay. We all know that off-road or pickup trucks will, will will lean. So as you can see, let's see. I've already tested with one minute 30 seconds point 50. But I, I, as you remembered, I played with the settings for a little bit. Let's see if we can make a difference here. Hmm. Similarly, it's, it's somehow similar. So it did it in 1 minute 30 seconds point 74. That's that is that's quick for a pickup truck, remember that. I mean pickup trucks or SUVs in, in previous in previous days or years they were very very slow and you can you couldn't corner them, you really couldn't corner them without tipping tipping them over or rolling them over. Except of course the the brand new Range Rover Sport. Now that is a different story. I'm talking about like expeditions, Ford expeditions, Chevrolet Tahoes, you know these heavy, bunkery, daily driving SUVs. No, you can, you, you cannot corn, corner these SUVs or pickup trucks. You will roll them, you will roll them over immediately. But this one turned out very, very well. Now, as always, I'm wondering about what kind of speed we will get here. So let's begin.
that is an awesome thing to see. A pickup truck that can go around this long. As you can see, the track length is 4,807 meters, which means 4.8 kilometers. That is that is that is long. I mean, it's like 2.1, 2.2 miles, I think. That is that is a long this track and it did it in 2 minutes 30 seconds in this heavy bunkery 2 ton pickup truck that is amazing now let's name this amazing thing uh, what should I name it the Beer Birna yes what are you driving I'm driving the new Birna v, uh, not, not, yes, V6 T or V6 Turbo Ah, that's great, okay. And the family is of course like the like the, like the car name, Vierna 2.5 liter Eco Boost V6. Okay, that is great. And the variant is Alu, which means aluminium or aluminum, as you would call it. Dual overhead camshaft, direct fuel injection. And what else? What else did we put inside this engine? Yes, full. Mm, let's see. Torque. No, not torque. All right, I'm gonna call that this line five. All right. So, all right. So as you can see, this thing, if you want, or this pickup truck, if you want to buy it, it will cost you thirty-two. Really? Thirty-two. Thirty-two thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars. Now that's amazing. You will get 450 horsepower, you will get a heavy duty, advanced high strength steel ladder chassis, lightweight panels, you will get, uh, what else, what do we have here, we, we will get 3 pistons ventilated disc brakes in front, 2 pistons solid disc in the rear, advanced automatic 9 speed gearbox, you will get uh, good safety, you will get premium interior, you will get a, a good pickup truck, uh, you can put stuff in the rear. Uh, we'll get a very very good options with this 30 what 37 32 thousand dollars oh, that's amazing that's a good good value I'm really happy with the end value I'm not sure about the Ford Raptor pickup truck price these days if you all if you if you already know what kind of what kind of price are we looking for the new f-150 Raptor in, in the US I think in dollars of course you can tell me in the comment section and of course, I would love, I would love really to know what, what, the, what is your opinion about this pickup truck. So thank you guys for watching. This has been a really long video, but I'm really happy with the end result. And thank you for whoever posted the, the F-150 Raptor request because, and I'm, and I do apologize because I've deleted the comment notifications on my mobile phone, so I did not really remember what is your username. And if you're wondering what kind of warning light we have, it means that the engine is big the engine is a huge thing but I'm not sure why look I'm gonna show you I'm gonna get in here under the hood look the engine isn't really big it fits perfectly and look at the distance we have between the hood or the bonnet and the engine huge distance and it says here the engine bay is very full really I mean this is an error they should really fix it the developers they should really attempt to fix this kind of errors so thank you guys for watching, I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy it, remember to smash that like button and I want to see those likes go up in the sky because likes we are really important to me. I want to see if you really like the video or if you don't like it, it's okay, you can push that dislike button, it's okay. Whatever suits you my friend. And if you are new to the channel and you've watched my previous videos and you like them of course, you can push that subscribe button and become a subscriber because I promise you will enjoy all my videos that I made before and I'm gonna make in the future. So thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see you with another video very very soon and I do really apologize about uh, the late videos or if I, I'm not making any requests these days because I'm kind of busy and the game is a, is, a little bit, is, a, is a little bit bad because of the new update and I hope they really fix it. So thank you and I will see you very very soon and goodbye.